Hey guys, my name is Dee and welcome back to my channel. So today I'm going to be going over how I became a cardiac sonographer and the journey and what kind of schooling I took in order to become a cardiac sonographer. So I realize everyone's journey is going to be different, but I want to share my story because, you know, when I applied, I was like 22, 23 years old and I had no idea what I wanted to do in my life. And I figured that by sharing my story, you might also be in a situation where you're at a crossroads of what you should do in your next step after school. So I figured by telling my story, maybe it'll give you some sort of idea on what to do next. So a little bit about me. Basically, when I was 21, 22, I was enrolled in York University and I was in my third year where I started exploring what I should do next. So originally my goal was to go into physiotherapy. After volunteering in a clinic, I soon realized that it just wasn't going to be for me. So I started exploring different healthcare fields and I was particularly interested in x-rays. Actually, I wanted to go into an x-ray program in London, Ontario and I, I started realizing that at that point that healthcare, it wasn't just about being a nurse or a doctor, but there was actually more uh, specialties that you could go into. I am the type of person that doesn't like to put all my eggs in one basket. So x-ray wasn't the only thing that I was looking into. I also looked into becoming a respiratory therapist as well. And so I also applied to that program as well. So the reason why I knew about cardiac sonography was actually through a family friend. So long story short, I had a family friend from church and their daughter actually went into the cardiac sonography program in Ontario. What intrigued me was honestly, they told me that their daughter was able to get two part-time jobs right away. And that's what I really needed in my life because at that point in my life, I was finishing up my undergrad program and I was just working minimum wage jobs. Uh, I believe I was working at a telecom company that was paying me with minimum wage and it was a sales job. And honestly, it just killed me to continually ask people to kind of spend more money all the time. I was just I just didn't imagine a life where I could spend the rest of my life in a job where I had to sell things to people. So the school that I applied to was Mohawk College. It's a school in Hamilton, Ontario, and it's a pretty short program. It's about 14, 15 months, and the application process wasn't actually too bad. I'll provide a link of um, what the requirements are, but I believe two of the main requirements was that you had to have an undergrad um, degree in healthcare. For myself, I was um, doing a kinesiology program, which was considered as part of the healthcare requirements, um, or you had to be of a healthcare profession. So say for example, if you were a cardiovascular technologist, so somebody who does like ECGs or Holter monitors or stress tests, or I saw a couple of people who were nurses that applied, or also some radiation therapists that I've heard who've applied in this program. Also foreign doctors. We saw a few foreign doctors that applied to this program that were also successful uh, in the application process. So I believe the second criteria was that you had to show that you were taking courses that would lead you into this cardiac sonography field. So um, for myself, I did take a couple of courses in the effects of uh, cardiac diseases and um, aging. So that helped me into getting into the program as well. So overall, my experience in the application process was pretty simple. There were no interviews that I had to take, but I do know that in other provinces and other schools, they do require a face-to-face -face interview where they test multiple things like problem solving skills and how you're like as a person and in terms of personality if you're going to fit this role but that wasn't the case for myself. So a few months pass and um, at this point I've already applied to three different fields so one of them was x-ray technology, the second one was respiratory therapy and the third was cardiac sonography and out of the three actually my ranking was 
x-ray technology, cardiac sonography, and respiratory th therapy. But at that point, I was waitlisted for x-ray technology. I got into the program for respiratory therapy, and then I was also waitlisted for cardiac sonography. So during the summertime, I get a phone call from Mohawk College telling me that I got off the waitlist and that I had the opportunity to be admitted uh, into the program. But I only had about 72 hours to actually decide whether or not I would go in. So I think, I mean, at that point I was only 23 and how I decided in the end was I went on Facebook, I think I wrote on my status what, what I should do. And a lot of people that were in um, some sort of like healthcare related specialty, um, they all said, oh, go into cardiac sonography. It's a shorter program and it just seems like it's gonna be a better fit for you. So the reason why I was in such a dilemma was because I was actually already enrolled into the respiratory therapy program in London, Ontario. And I already mentally prepared myself to go into respiratory therapy. So the thing is, is that that respiratory therapy program, that was going to be seven semesters. So it would have taken me about two and a half, almost three years to actually complete the program. Whereas I found with the cardiac sonography program, I would be finished in about a year and a bit and I could start working. So in the end, I decided to go into the cardiac sonography program because it was much shorter. And I found that in the end, that was my second choice anyways. So I decided that it was worth it for me to kind of give up the residency, my spot in respiratory therapy, because in the end, I was looking at my long-term goals, which was to get into a career in healthcare that I could find myself working in. So in the end, I decided to go into the cardiac sonography program at Mohawk College. And just a quick summary of how the program works. It's about a 14, 15 month program. It's a graduate certificate program. And the first eight months or so, you are learning everything in the theory components. So everything about the physiology, about the anatomy, about patient care, etc. And then there is a portion within that eight months where you're learning how to scan. So um, you do have labs that you work in where you start scanning um, each of your classmates to get a practice on your dexterity skills. So the last portion of the program is a six month practicum. It's split into two sections. So you get two three month practicums in two different clinics or hospitals. So for myself, I actually had two practicums where they were both in hospitals. The first practicum was in a smaller hospital where they only had two rooms. And my second practicum was a much bigger hospital. It was a cardiac care hospital. They did a lot of the valve replacements. They did a lot of the bypasses. So more serious conditions. So the 14 months that passed by, it flew by so quick, but also I want to say that it wasn't the easiest program that I've done. So, you know, I'm not really a school kind of academic person. And I found a lot of times I was struggling. I cried a lot. I had, luckily I had a friend that I could lean on because it was very intensive program. You had to learn so much in such a little amount of time. And also you had to learn how to kind of learn the flow of being in a hospital or being in a clinic pretty quickly. So for somebody like myself, I never had any hospital or clinic experience. I was just totally green and I found the adjustment was quite difficult for me. In the middle of my second practicum, that's when I decided I should start applying for jobs. So this was probably in September, October, where I started looking for jobs and I started applying. And my original goal was that I didn't want to work in a situation where I would burn out really quick. So at that time, um, a lot of clinics they were pushing sonographers to do a lot of scans. So there was one clinic that I applied to where conditions were that you had to scan 12 exams in a span of eight hours, which I found was a little bit too intense for me because I was going to come out very new and I just felt that I needed time to kind of adjust the things as well as improve my skills. 
I applied to pretty much all the hospitals that I could find in Canada. So I believe I applied in Winnipeg, Saskatchewan, Alberta, British Columbia. And in the end, I did get um, interviews in British Columbia. I did the interview and actually, after I did the interview, I did not know if I wanted to move to BC. So I ended up telling my other classmate about the interview and um, letting them know to apply as well, just because I knew that they wanted to come to either Alberta or BC. So I gave them a shot as well. And then in the end, they gave me the position. So at that point, you know, I, I had three months left before I would start the, the job. And um, it wasn't until the last week before I was supposed to move where I decided, okay, this is real. I'm actually gonna move. So I took that job seven years ago and now I'm, I mean, I'm still in British Columbia. So I currently work at a larger hospital. After seven years, people ask me if I still like my job or people ask me if I'm bored of my job. And to be quite honest, I am very happy with what I do. I just find it very rewarding. I mentioned before, you know, I was in a job before where I was in sales and I, I'm just not a salesperson. I just can't, I feel like I'm selling my soul if I'm selling things to people. So to be in a career where, you know, I can just do my job and I don't expect anything back from a patient or I, I don't expect anything else or there's no incentive for me to um, do the job that in itself is rewarding for me i find that being part of the process of figuring out what's going on with the patient it's it's interesting it makes life interesting and you know you never know what to expect when you're scanning someone because i've seen many times where people will come into the room they look totally normal and then their heart is telling me something else so it's stuff like that that makes my job more interesting and i also find that working with students makes things interesting as well so a lot of my job um, description requires me to um, work with students and residents as well and i just find that seeing their growth in their skills is so rewarding it reminds me of how I was like seven years ago where, you know, I was totally green. I didn't know what to do. And, you know, for me to be their guide, to help them to be like, hey, you know, this is how things are run in the hospital. And this is what you should do in this situation and see them grow from that. It's very rewarding. And it's nice to see that there are students that are very interested in, you know, advancing their career in um, finally taking a step into a career where it can help people. For me, this job was really life-changing and something that I don't really share in my personal life is that growing up, I didn't really have the easiest time. My parents struggled financially and I also worked just minimum wage jobs for I think like seven, eight years while I was finishing up my schooling. And for me to just go into an actual career where for the first time I could think about benefits, I could think about pension, I could think about, you know, having vacation time, sick time. That was so foreign to me. Even to this day, it just, I find it very weird that I get three days off and I still get paid a decent amount. And to be honest, this career was very life-changing for me. Might not look like a fancy career, but you know, I find that I'm very proud of what I do because in the end, I know that I'm helping people and I can do it at a um, situation where I'm not financially struggling either. And I also just want to say that this career isn't the most perfect either. There are times where I do experience a lot of pain from the jobs. I've mentioned in other videos that a lot of this job comes with a lot of pain um, in the shoulders and the hips and the back. And those are things that I've had to deal with. So luckily I get benefits where I am able to get massage and physiotherapy covered for myself. Um, so I take advantage of that so that I can make sure that I can prolong my career. Okay, so that is it for this video. Thank you guys so much for listening. And, you know, I really do hope that this video helped you in deciding whether or not this is a career for you. I know that when I was 
24. I did not know if this was going to be my um, end all be all career. I think now doing it for seven years, it's definitely a career that I want to extend and continue to do. And if you find that you want to know more about cardiac sonography, please subscribe to this channel. I will continue to discuss more cardiac sonography related topics. So again, thanks for watching and I hope to see you again soon. Bye.